Welcome to Hard Questions, where we gather pastors together to take on your tough questions and answer them right from the Bible. I'm Tom Hollis, the moderator, and today our panelists include... Dr. William R. Glaze, Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Ray Heipel, Providence Presbyterian Church in Robinson Township. Pete Jacqueline, South Hills Assembly of God Church, Bethel Park, PA. G. Anthony Gilbert, pastor of Another Level in the North Hills area. Well, pastors, thank you for being here. I was, I'm always blessed that I get to sit here and hear all this wisdom and other stuff and, and uh, really good answers to what uh, your hard questions are. And today on Hard Questions, we're taking on your questions from the hotline. So let's start with this one. Was, was Satan sent to earth before Adam and Eve were there or after? And if he came down after they were on earth, how could a God who loves his children like he says he does do that to us by sending the demons and Satan down there to tempt us and wreak havoc with us? Well, thank you for the question. And actually, I think it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, it has a lot to it, but I think uh, it'll be interesting to hear the answers. Pastor Ray. I mean, the technical answer to was Satan sent to earth before Adam and Eve uh, were there. Um, you know, the Bible doesn't talk about exactly when Satan fell. We know he fell before Adam and Eve were tempted because he tempted them. Um, but I would, uh, and I understand the question and I understand people have this in their hearts and there's a sense in which, you know, uh, this question was phrased very boldly and very directly, but boy, I would be really careful about suggesting that God sent Satan and the demons to tempt us and to wreak havoc with us. I mean, there's a sense in which that, saying it that way makes God the author of evil. Uh, God is the one who, who is hurting innocent man. I, I just want you to think about it for a second. God created man in his own image who, who didn't exist and God didn't need man, God didn't need anything. And he makes this creature from the dirt and he puts everything under his feet and he gives him his own image. And he gives them dominion and he gives them one prohibition. He gives them all the trees of the garden mm. except one. And this creature takes and breaks the only law that God gave him. And God doesn't destroy this creature. And God doesn't send Satan and the demons to wreak havoc down here. I mean, I, I just God, ha, God is the God who does everything good yes. and great and awesome and wonderful and beautiful and we sin. You know, the Bible says it's not Satan that makes us sin. Uh, the Bible says that each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed. We don't even need Satan to sin. This world would still be a wreck <laughs> without right. Satan yeah, and right. without demons. And so I just be really careful to this, to this man, you know, really think about what you're saying here because, I mean, your question makes God the author of, of, of evil. When when every breath we take is another amazing gift of grace, we should all be in hell right now. That's what we should get from God. And he doesn't do that, not at all. And so just, you know, really be careful. God is such, so merciful and gracious and kind and loving and long suffering. And he lets us continue to live and he lets Satan and the demons continue to live, not because he can't stop them, but because he's gonna use their evil for good and show his power in that. And, and we, we need to trust the Lord can, and not... Can I, can I ask yeah. Ray a question? Yeah. For, when you agree from the standpoint that God allowed Satan to come oh, yeah. uh, so that Adam and Eve, you know, would have to make a choice, uh, you know, whether they were going to obey God or whether they were going to disobey God. Yeah. Now, I didn't say God sent them, God yeah. sent, but God allowed that. Would you say that? Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd say he even ordered it according to his okay. eternal plan and purpose ultimately for the good of, of, of man. But I think that inherent in the question is a charge against God. Yes. Uh, and yeah, oh, so, there. you know, I think, I think that that's... And that's, I think also not just, it's not the fact, I don't think it's a wrong to say that he sent them because he allowed it to send, to allow, mm -hmm. however you want to put that. Yeah. It's the motive mm -hmm. to tempt us and wreak havoc God with us. Like God said, no I'm sending all this yeah. stuff your way, hoping yeah. that you're going to, no, yeah, no, no, right, no. Right. To choice but he gave us those options, but he didn't do it with a malintent, mm, yes. you know, of like, well, I'm hoping yeah. that I can destroy man. You know, that's not at all where God's heart Let was. Let no man say when he is tempted, he is tempted that's of right. God, for God cannot tempt with evil. So how tempts. did the snake so, get in the garden anyway? You know and what? I, I, I wonder I about that. I, when I heard this, yeah, I was like, yeah. wait a second, why, why did God even allow that? I've done a little study, and, and I know we have some deep scholars here, and I, I love you and respect you very much. And one, what I discovered, 
that when, when um, Adam was given before the fall to till the ground, to take care of the garden, it was his responsibility to make sure that there was a hedge in the garden. And I personally feel, I, I see you shaking your head, yes, uh, Ray. I personally feel Adam failed in that, in allowing the, I really believe he failed in allowing the, go ahead. Ray. That, that word to tend and to keep, right. the word to keep is shemer. The shemerim are the watchmen on the wall. Right. God is saying to Adam, guard the garden because there's a threat. Right. He knew there was a threat. So God pre-warned him. Yes. Interesting. Absolutely. I had never uh, heard it's that It's a as great a, as a study. He pre-warned, yeah. and, and Adam failed in his God-given responsibilities. Wow, very good. So, but the animal was a creation of God. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Satan entered into that, that animal. But, but Adam well, did didn't choose. do his job. Yeah. Right, exactly, yeah. 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 Oh, very good. And, and again, uh, God's always loving and always That's does right. the right That's thing. Right. And never can we bring a charge against them. Amen. But it's okay to ask a question. I don't think God's insecure yeah. about the question. <laughs> but uh, let's go to the next one. Hello. Um, I have a question that I haven't really got a satisfied answer with. Uh, Jesus we'll knows us before we are even in our mother's room. He knows our destiny and everything. I have the question that if Jesus knew Judas was going to betray him, and that was Judas's destiny to betray our Lord. Is, did he go to heaven or did he go to hell? Well, a, a very good question. Let's, uh, let's go right there. If, if God preordains someone to do something, are they responsible for it? I think is the summarization of the question. Yeah. And I, I still think that Judas, you know, even though it was a destiny for Jesus mm -hmm. to be portrayed, that it didn't have to be Judas, Amen. Uh, that Judas made himself available, you know, for that. And, and the answer to the question and kind of the follow up, did Jesus go to, uh, Judas go to heaven or hell? Uh, several times we read in the scripture uh, that Satan entered into Judas. Yeah. Uh, Jesus outright said in John 6, 64, that Judas was an unbeliever. Now that, Jesus said that uh, when, when, uh, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Uh, he said that Judas was not clean. He, you know, he mm -hmm. washed the, all the other disciples' feet, but he said Judas was not clean. In John 17, 12, Judas is called the son of perdition, yeah. mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, we know that the Antichrist is also called the son of perdition. And then when Judas committed suicide, mm -hmm. it said he went to his own place, which, you know, was hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't argue with that, but I, I really believe up to the very end, I still believe Jesus was offering him a way out. A way out. I way I, I, that's just sure. my personal, you know. Praise God that he does and he offers us that too. Also, I want to spring more about what you said about Judas too. I think that uh, um, there was a series of yeses to Satan before he entered him. And that's why I think we have to be so careful of what we say yes, yes. to. Good, uh, because it, it's not like one day, like basically Judas was just here and Duff said, well, I'm just going to take Judas. We don't know what was written between the lines, but those years he's walking with Jesus, he had said, yes, Satan, yes, Satan, yes, Satan. And when you get to saying yes long enough, eventually Satan says, you've given me legal right. And now he had an ability to enter in and fulfill his cause uh, as a result. And, and if you're a son of perdition, you have a father. So that means the father of perdition is giving birth to you in that moment. So in essence, when Satan entered into him, he became almost like how we become born again. The spirit of Satan entered within him because of a series of yeses that he gave. Interesting. So uh, this is going to be hard, but you've got like 45 seconds here. Read the scripture, Mark 14, 21. For the son of man goes just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man never if he had never been born. Clearly it was God's plan. Clearly uh, Judas did it willingly and freely and clearly he was judged with eternal damnation. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. Peter disowned him too. That's true. But he Peter forgave Peter. Three Peter. Times. Right. You know, right. whereas interesting that Judas had remorse, but he didn't go ask for forgiveness. Yeah. He, he, he did. He yeah. uh, took his own life. Yeah. So, well, hey, interesting conversation. Stay tuned. We'll be back in 60 seconds and we ask, 
how we expected to work out our, our, our work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Hard Questions. We're taking your calls from the Hard Question Hotline. And if you would like to leave us your question, and I hope you do, we encourage you to call 412-349-4326. It's there on your screen. And we would love to answer your tough questions on the air. So let's go to the next one. Philippians 2, verse 12 says that we're to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Can you shine some light on this for me and tell me what this means to the Christian? Very good, very good question. And, and very implicit in this question is that we don't work for our salvation, you know? So what does it mean, Pastor Glaze, to work out our salvation with fear and trembling? Right, it's very interesting that the Greek word there is used in working out, out a problem, you know, and you, where you work out that problem uh, till you get the full answer. And, and so what he's saying here that, you know, we are saved, you know, and what we need at this point to work out our salvation to its completion, not as far as completion that we get saved, but just all that God has for end. us. Mm -hmm. You know, man, just, just think of all the, the blessings that God has for us as Christians. And if we just continue on that path where we work that out, you know, just like we work out that math problem and we get that answer, mm -hmm. that one day we'll stand before the Lord because we've worked out our salvation and he'll say, well done. Mm -hmm. Thou good and faithful servant. I get the chills when I hear that too. Yeah. <laughs> Some scriptures, yeah. And then, and then he says with fear and trembling. And mm -hmm. you know, we talked about that in an earlier program with mm -hmm. reverence, you know, just, yeah. just that we do it with the, the, the reverence, you know, as realizing that God is, is watching us as we work out our salvation. That's right, yeah. When, when I think of the scripture, you know, all, all, over all the years I've been saved, I, I lean towards your own convictions some personal convictions that I personally have may not pers be personal convictions of, of Dr. Glaze's. So, and, so, and I think it's really important that my personal convictions, there's certain things that I'm saying, for example, in my life, for me, and again, I'm saying for Pete Jacqueloni, uh, alcohol is something that, it's an old flame, that's an old love. Uh, and when I got saved, it, it had to go from me. It had to go. Yeah. So, but for me to, and I came from an all Italian Assembly's got church where many of the deacons, if you went to their home for, for dinner, you'd see a big gallon, uh, they were old time Italians, a big gallon of wine there. They didn't get drunk. But for me, I just didn't want to rekindle any old flames. Yeah. I wanted so that. So you were working out your salvation. That's how I take yeah, it. Yeah, walking how, it out. Yeah. I think one of the things too, when you look at that, it says, therefore, work out your own salvation. You have to really take verses one through 11 into context mm -hmm. to really understand. He's talking to them about um, how they're operating in their faith. He said, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or right. conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem, esteem. others better than himself. So he's talking about this humility piece. Mm -hmm. And what does that look like mm -hmm. as a believer? And then he goes through and talks about the mind of Christ and how let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ. Therefore, Work out your own salvation through fear and trouble. So to your point, it could be any area, but we need to not do anything through selfish ambition. We right. don't need to use our flesh as an occasion to sin. We have to kind of determine. I always say this for people as believers, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Ooh. And what works for another person doesn't mean that'll work for you. Yeah. So you have to determine you. And that's why I think he says with fear and trembling, because you may look, I may look at Dr. Glaze and you, uh, or you may look at someone and say, hey, you know what? They can drink, but you can't. You know, yeah. so you got to work out your own with fear and trouble. Yeah. It doesn't mean like, well, yeah. hey, well, that so-and-so, Ray, he had something to drink. Well, I can have a drink. Well, maybe yeah. not. Maybe that not. might take me to hell. He may be just fine getting there. Yeah. So that's where I think the fear and the trembling yeah. comes in. Because right. he's saying, don't do it just flippantly. Make sure you're very careful and calculated in how you're walking out and letting the mind of Christ that's be in you. Really good. And uh, along that theme, I, I go out with restaurants with dear friends of mine, and, and they'll say, Pastor, do you mind if I order a beer? Get what you want. Yeah. And it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, yeah, right. Pete, I have to say at my Italian grandfather's house, yeah. you always had that gallon jug oh. of planter of the vineyard, <laughs> vineyard under the sink, you know, oh, a glass can, and it went in everything, coffee, spaghetti sauce. <laughs> He's but, right. He's but anyway, right. I just want to say about um, yeah. the, 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 the verse, you know, what I see here, so therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not in my presence only, but much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling for, next verse, 13, for it is God who works 
in you, you yeah. both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So you're not trusting in your own works. You're working out what God is working in. You know, God has changed Lord, you if you're like a Christian. It. God has given you faith. And so um, you have to um, work out what God is working in. It just means live the Christian life. The Christian life has to be lived. Yeah, very good, very good. Very good question and great answers. Well, let's go on to the next question. I'd like to know um, if masturbation is a sin. Okay, straight to the point there uh, with that question. So, Pete. Let, let me go to two famous psycho psychological doctors, Dr. Dobbins and Dr. Dobbs' son. Yeah. And uh, both really address this in, in depth. So, if to go in depth, I would, would recommend you Dr. Dobbins and Dr. Dobbs' son. They really go in depth. I want to approach this with the fact that we're warned in scripture about anyone who commits sexual sin, sins against the body. Every other sin is outside the body. So I would pre-warn that, that when it comes time for this particular sexual sin, and there's major problems today because of uh, young men that have fallen into this, that they cannot have a normal relationship. And there's so many, 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 many studies that have done on this that now there's no performance when it comes time of actually getting married. And, and I've heard testimonies this, of this of others. This is, is a sin that is against you and you, you really don't want to enter into that type of sin. It, okay. it has good ramifications point. that you don't want to pay. Yeah, yeah, good point, Dr. Glitz. Well, you know, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter seven, uh, it talks about avoiding fornication yeah. and let every man have his own wife mm -hmm. and let every woman have her own husband and let the husband render to the wife her due benevolence and likewise the wife unto the husband. Uh, for the wife has not the power over her body, but the husband and likewise the husband has not power over his own body, not the wife. Defraud not one another. Yeah. You know, you have to ask the question and I think this answers the question, what is the purpose for sex? You know, and sex is to be carried out within the confines of a marriage relationship. And masturbation, to me, just in these scriptures that we read, violates three principles in this passage. First of all, masturbation is sex disconnected from a relationship. Right. Uh, second, masturbation is keeping one's body to their self and not sharing it with another. And then thirdly, masturbation is done alone and not together. Yeah. So, well, uh, and I know there can be some yeah, arguments yeah. that, well, you know, what about husbands and wives that, you know, are together and they, you know, so, but I'm just saying it's, it's actually a violation of, of this passage right here. Because masturbation is almost always connected to fornication or adultery in the mind, yeah. you yeah. know, of some sort. But, now, now, yeah. to, now to be fair, can we throw this out real quick? So these guys might be able to answer this. What happens when a spouse dies? That's a whole different story. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things I've heard too, I'm going to springboard off that because something that I've heard recently, like a lot of people that are on the road, they will right. use FaceTime, but then, you know, you can kind of fill in, I mean, so okay. uh, within yeah, a marital yeah, content. Fill in the blank. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, so I mean, so that's kind of, I mean, that's another conversation. I know we're running out of time here, but I also, I agree with these gentlemen, what they're saying, that it's a misuse yeah. as well. Yeah, right. it, it's, it's because God, can, and I think when you arouse those marital passions, there's no place to go but up. Yeah. You have to keep going with that. It's not like, well, if I do it one time, I'll be good. No, you're going to want it the next day yeah. and the next day. And usually most people that do that are, turn into addicts that's and right. it goes into a lot addiction. of crazy stuff. Yes, so. yeah. Yeah. Yes, very much so. Yeah, sex is the gift of God, as you gentlemen said, and it is to be between a, a man and a woman. And part of it is for pleasure. It's just, you know, it's yeah. not just as right. the early church said, well, it has to be for children only because, you know, any pleasure from sex is bad. That's yeah. wrong. Mm -hmm. That's, that's uh, not true. But to use sex in a way to pleasure yourself, as Dr. Glaze said, I really like what you said, Dr. Glaze, about you know those three principles. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's even spoken of in Scripture. You have words, oh, so, so fornication is porneia, sexual immorality, which is the big word. But then you have uncleanness and lewdness, you know, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication. fornication. Now that's sex yeah. in different relationships, but then it says uncleanness, lewdness. Uh, and uncleanness in the Old Testament was the result of an emission of semen. Right, right. And yeah. so you do have, I think it addressed, a new, new, new um, translations say impurity, but impurity, uh, I think it, it assumes a kind of masturbation type sin. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Very good. Wow. I mean, it is a good question, but uh, again, clearly uh, a sin related to uh, sexual immorality. Well, coming up in 60 seconds, we ask if we possess the same spirit that Elijah had, why don't we possess the same power? Welcome back to Hard Questions. Let's listen to our last hotline question of the show. My question is, if we possess the same spirit that Elijah had, why don't we possess the same power? All right, very good question, Pastor Jay. You know, I'm gonna guess that where they're coming from is in James 5. We're talking about how Elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and did not rain on the land for three years and six months. Mm -hmm. And he prayed again and having again rain and the earth produces fruit. Because mm -hmm. I would venture to say, and I know this to be true, that I don't want the same anointing Elijah had. Yeah. I want the anointing post Christ okay. and his resurrection. Uh, yeah. The Bible said, you know, the spirit in the Old Testament would come upon these men and then lift. Now the same spirit that rose up Christ from the dead lives inside of us. The Bible says, as Christ was, so are we. You can't say that about the Old Testament people because Elijah and all of them, well, besides Elijah, he was a raptured actually up into, into heaven. But the rest of the people that were in the Old Testament, they were all uh, held in Sheol until the time that Christ- Why, why has James mentioned that then? That, you know, that okay. he's- that, Because that he's talking about prayer. Okay. He's talking yeah. in regards to yeah. prayer and about the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man available much and how we had the same desires and just how Elijah had the same things that we battled with, so he had them as well. Yeah. But he's talking about do we how come we don't have the same power? We have a okay. greater power than Elijah is what I'm speaking of, is that it's even greater and as much as they did the miracles they worked in the Old Testament, we have even more in the New mm -hmm. Testament. People say, Well, why don't we operate in it? Well, one of the things too in First Corinthians chapter twelve, it talks about how there are different ranges different callings based upon what you're called to do. Like, you know, there are some people like, um, uh, oh my goodness, uh, I was thinking of his name now, the, the great evangelist, uh, uh, Billy, Graham. Billy Graham, thank you, uh, that uh, passed away. But how many, we're not all called to reach the same amount. Right. So we're everybody has different this. graces yeah. in order to do that. So a lot of times people say, well, we don't have the same power. Well, you do, but it doesn't mean everybody has the same grace to do as much. Just like the talents, the man that had five, the man had two, the man had right. one, Everybody's they all had the ability to do that. So yeah. I think that's important to take into consideration and, as well. And, and you know, what's really important here also is the fact that it, it wasn't Elijah's idea. He didn't come up with the idea that for it not to rain. God spoke to him. This was ordained of God. Right. Now, if I can throw this out real quick, I remember years and years and years ago, we were at a golf outing uh, and it was... And called down fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was a severe storm coming. All the alarms went off and many of us did pray. And the guy, this was at Edgewood Country Club and the, and the, the groundskeeper was, the storm literally started at the beginning and I know many won't believe this, at the course and completely split and went around. And the groundskeeper said, I've never seen this in my life. We finished the round. It was for Dr. Joseph's uh, uh, fundraising years ago. Oh, now wow. that was, so, wow. And that did ha actually wow. happen. And they were like, all right. Well, wow. you know, I also think Jesus said that we should do, we'll do greater works. That's right. And, you know, when you think about the, the greater works, you know, we have the ability, you know, to see people saved. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the ability to see right. God do great. I mean, you know, we just built a, a, a new sanctuary, yeah. Yeah. you know, and, you know, we basically raised the money. You know, we had to, at the end, we had to get, you know, a little help sure. but up front until the inflation hit, you know, that, that God blessed us. Right. And, you know, we were able to see the power of God work in, in raising finances. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I, I think the greater works that I'm like, Jay, you know, I, I, I don't want the Elijah anointing. I want the right. you know, post-resurrection anointing. There you go. Yeah. All right. Um, I agree with what the, what the men have said, but I'm going to look at the question a slightly different way. Uh, and, I, I, and I take it exactly the way Jay did. It's, it's with prayer. I mean, if he's talking about James 5, and I don't know what else he could be talking about, you know, uh, it says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectant, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Uh, and then it goes, Elijah was a man with like nature as ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. It did not rain for three years. So clearly James is saying, pray because look at Elijah. He prayed and, and God answered his prayers. God will answer your prayer. So that's the context in which we do have the same promises of Elijah. In fact, he's an example to encourage you to do likewise. What I would say though is not possible for us is to do the, the miraculous works that Elijah did. 
Um, remember, he does what, seven, right? He does seven. Yeah. And, and Elisha does, does 14, 14. Yeah. because he gets a double portion, which means clearly that God had appointed the miracles that they did. Elisha couldn't have done 15 because mm -hmm. he was appointed to do 14. Do you see what I'm saying? So you're not Elijah, you're not Elisha. You haven't been called and given those miracles. You have, we have greater things in the New Testament. I totally agree with the brothers. It's better to be on this side of, of the cross than on that side. The Holy Spirit's always with us. We have a fullness of mm -hmm. access to God. We don't have to go through animals and priests and one time a year and all that Amen. stuff. But by the same token, I can't call down fire from heaven and I don't think anybody else can because God gave that to Elijah. Yeah, you actually, know, that was his role. I'm really glad I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Crispy critters. Yeah, we don't know who would have been called down. Uh, very good question, very good answer as well. Uh, we like to end with a program and today we go to uh, end the program with the scripture. Today we go to 1 John where it says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, Hallelujah. He is faithful and just Amen. to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise the Lord, so glad of that. We hope you enjoyed Hard Questions today. Please give us a call. We'd love to hear from you or we'd love to either go to our email line as well. Have a great day.